Now let's dive more into correlation and scatter plots. Awesome. So I think we're going to go ahead and start off with just the general syntax for creating a scatter plot in Python. And we've done visualizations in Python before, so this is actually very similar. The syntax is basically just df.plot.scatter. And we want our options to be whatever our x variable is and our y variable is. So we can see this example um, to the right of, it looks like this is the diamond data set. This is the diamond data set. Wade, do you want to tell us a little bit about that, your favorite data set? We'll dive into it more in a bit, but the diamond data set is a classic data set that has over 50,000 diamonds and variables about all the different characteristics of the diamond. This includes the X, Y, and Z size of the diamonds, as well as things like the table, which is the amount of the diamond you see on the face of the diamond. And the most important variable, the price and the weight. Ooh, and that's actually what this scatter plot shows. We have, it looks like price is our Y variable and the caret weight is the X variable. So we have this scatter plot and each point represents a particular diamond and we can see its caret weight and price. So that's how you create scatter plots in Python. And we may be interested, just looking at the carat weight and the price, we may be interested, what is the relationship between these two variables? And we can see that the points, again, kind of slope up and to the right, meaning it has a positive correlation. And the way that we can measure this is through a statistic called the correlation coefficient. So the correlation coefficient is a statistic that measures the linear association between X and Y. It specifically looks at the strength of that linear association. Um, we can think of this as measuring how tightly the points are clustered around a line. We know that it doesn't represent how tight points are clustered around a curve or any other shape because this is specifically for linear relationships. And it's relevant when the scatter plot forms a linear trend, kind of like we see up here. The statistical symbol for the correlation coefficient is the lowercase letter r, so you're gonna see me using that throughout the series as we talk about the correlation. So puzzle one says to draw a few examples of scatter plots where r would be an appropriate summary statistic. So we saw that with the diamond data set, the, the caret and the price looks like r would be appropriate. Anything basically where we can draw a line of best fit through the points. So we could look at something like this with a positive correlation. We could look at something like this with a negative correlation. Um, we could even look at something that had no correlation. And R would correctly tell us that there's no linear pattern there. Something that wouldn't be appropriate is maybe if we saw points that had kind of a pattern that looked like a curve. This would not be good for looking at the correlation coefficient because it wouldn't make sense to draw a line of best fit through those points. So let's go ahead and keep going. We know the correlation coefficient is always going to be between negative one and positive one. Any correlation coefficient that's negative just means the points are sloping down and to the right as x goes up, y goes down, and any correlation that's positive means that as x goes up, y goes up. So the deal with one and negative one, we call those perfect correlations. The closer the points hug a line with a positive slope, the closer R is to one, and then the closer the line, the closer the points hug a line with a negative slope, the closer R is to negative one. So basically what we see, if we want to think about a perfect correlation of one, we would see all of our points in an exact straight line with a positive slope something like this. This would be a perfect correlation. A negative correlation of negative one would be the exact same thing. The points form a perfect line, except it has a negative slope. So those are kind of the two extremes of the correlation coefficient. And then lastly, it says if there's no association between x and y, the correlation coefficient is zero, and the scatter plot has no linear pattern. So generally, we see kind of just this big blob of points with no clear linear association. That would be when r is zero. So the nice thing about the perfect correlation is that 
if we know X, we can perfectly predict Y. That's why it's called a perfect correlation. And this is great for prediction, but it's kind of unrealistic. We don't see this super often, especially if we're trying to make predictions. We probably don't have a correla perfect correlation, otherwise we could make perfect predictions. Uh, and then the correlation of zero means knowing one variable gives you no information about the other. So this would be not useful in terms of prediction. Below, we just have some examples of different correlations. We can see that the closer R gets to positive one, the closer the points form a, a straight line. And then we see that exact same pattern with the negative correlations. So we can look at these scatter plots really easily in Python and see the overall general pattern. So you may be wondering at this point, okay, the correlation coefficient is a statistic that can help us look at the relationship between an X and Y variable, but how do you calculate it? So how do we mathematically calculate the correlation coefficient? And I have the description here in words of how we go ahead and do this. Basically, we wanna take both of our X's and Y's and convert them all to Z-scores. We know that Z-scores are standard units, which is really nice. Then we wanna multiply the z-score for x by each corresponding z-score for y to kind of put those points, make sure that the two values are together. And then the correlation coefficient is the average of those products. So if I was gonna write this in symbols, I would say that r is equal to the sum of each z-score for x multiplied by its corresponding z-score for y and then to turn that sum into an average, I'm gonna divide by n. So wait, I think we can actually do this probably a lot easier in Python, right? That'd be really easy to do. Yeah, so we're gonna look into that in a bit, but for now, I just wanna make sure we can see a quick example of how to do this by hand. You probably will not have to do this by hand ever again, but I wanted to make sure you really understood where this is coming from. So we have two quizzes, quiz one and quiz two, and we wanna find the correlation coefficient. If I look at the scatter plot down below, it looks like we have the points, there's only four of them, but they kind of form, if I was gonna draw a line of best fit, I feel like I would draw a line with a positive slope. But two of those points are quite far away, so we know the R is not gonna be that great, right? Yeah, we know it's not gonna be super close to positive one, but I predict that R is gonna be positive. So, Wait, can you calculate a few quick statistics for me? Of course. So I need the average and the SD of quiz one and quiz two. So what are the quiz one scores? So quiz one is 10, nine, five, and four. All right, so the quiz one, you want the mean? Yep, the mean and standard deviation. So the average is seven. Seven, and what about the standard deviation? 2.94. 2.94, .94. 2 .94. and then let's do the same thing for quiz two. So for quiz two, we have 10, seven, nine, and six. Average is eight, and the standard deviation is 1.83. 1.83. So we have the average and standard deviation, and we have our scatter plot. The question is, what is our correlation coefficient? So our first step is to go ahead and convert all these x's and y's to z-scores. So just really quick, remember our z-score formula for just a list of numbers, which we have here. There's no sampling or anything, so this isn't a random variable. It's just value minus average divided by SD. So I'm gonna do this for all of the X's and all of the Y's. So wait, if you could help me out here. Yeah. We'll do the first one, the Z-score for quiz one. The first value is gonna be my value, which is 10. 10 was my quiz one score. The average for quiz one was seven, and then the SD was 2.94. So three divided by 2.94. That is 1.02. Which is 1.02. And then we could do that for all the other quiz ones. So we have nine um, minus seven, so two divided by 2.94. That is 0 0.68. 0 0.68, we have negative two, so that would be negative 0 0.68. Yep. And then we have negative three, which would be negative 1.02. All right, that was easier than I thought. Um, for the Y's, we would do the same thing. Quiz two, our first score is 10, so that's our value. Our average for the Y's is eight. And then my SD is 1.83. So two divided by 1.83 is 
1.09, and then we have 7 minus 8, so negative 1 divided by 1.83. That is negative 0 0.55. Negative 0.55, and then we have 9 minus 8, so 1, so positive 0.55. Positive, yep. And then we have 6 minus 8, so that's negative, negative two. 2, so negative 1.09. So we have all of these z-scores. Step one is to find them all, and then step two is to multiply them together. I want to make sure that the z-score for um, x1 and y1 are combined. So I have 1.02 times 1.09. That is 1.11. 1 1.11, and then I have 0.68 times negative 0.55. That is negative 0.37. Negative 0.37, that's going to be the same for my next one. And then for the last one, I am going to have 1.11 again. So now I have all of these products of z-scores, and r is just the average of them. So I'm going to take 1.11 plus negative 0.37 plus negative 0.37 plus 1.11 and divide that by 4 to get my correlation coefficient. And the correlation coefficient divided by 4 is 0 0.37. 0 0.37. So R is 0.37 and we were right, our prediction was right that it's positive and we're basically saying that quiz one and quiz two has a, have a positive correlation, but it's not super strong. I guess depending on what you're doing. I would say this isn't super strong, but in general I can still say that as your score increases on quiz one, it also increases at, on quiz two. So that's how you calculate the correlation coefficient by hand. As you can see, it's pretty tedious. We're going to use Python to do this super quickly, especially if we have a data frame with two columns and we want to know the correlation coefficient.